Hello, everyone. It's time for Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis. This is episode 318, season 13. Today's date is March 24th, 2024, and uh, welcome to the show. I like that. It's 324 24. <laughs> <laughs> On today's program, uh, I'm going to talk about the 60th anniversary of the debut of. Uh, Chicago television station, WCIU-TV, Channel 26 in Chicago. Uh, Mind you, it's still around, but I'm going to talk about its history, and uh, it's been changed over the years. And I'll talk about my memories of watching the station when I was a kid, because it's not like today. Uh, uh, It was so different. Also, I will talk about uh, Falstaff beer. Talk about my memories of that beer, and uh, that, that would be interesting as well. Right now, the program will go into a commercial break. This program is brought to you by Burger King Specialty Sandwiches. <laughs> oh, and this is a commercial from the late 1970s. And as you listen to the commercial, they introduce a new line of sandwiches besides hamburgers, you know, besides hot Whoppers. So I'll, after the commercial is played, I'll explain. Okay? So sit back, kick off your shoes, relax. And I'll be right back with the program, folks. Thank you. Who's got something brand new you never had before? Who's got the best darn burger and a whole lot more? Burger King introduces four new specialty sandwiches. Chicken is a new filet, white meat through and through. A chopped beef steak is U.S. choice. The ham and cheese is new. A great fish sandwich, too. Who's got the best darn burger and a whole lot more? New specialty sandwiches. Burger King and mine. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Burger King specialty sandwiches. They were introduced in 1978. And uh, then they expanded uh, a year later to all restaurants uh that's when the original chicken sandwich was introduced and uh believe it or not it's still on the menu the rest are gone you know as the ones you heard on the uh uh on the commercial that is uh they had ham and cheese uh, roast beef and fish uh they have fish but it's uh different like that i never tried it so uh the menu has changed over the years uh and they added more stuff you know like that uh when i worked at burger king in 1980 probably 82 yeah 80 yeah late 1981 to 82 i was at daily college on the southwest side of chicago I uh, got a job at a Burger King in the Brighton Park neighborhood. And, uh, you know, I worked part-time. I went to school. Uh, that was a little tough, you know, back then. You know, I wasn't doing well in my studies. You know, I was just a little uh, aimless. You know, I didn't, want to, I didn't want to want to do with my life. I'm not sure. I didn't really want to go to daily. <laughs> you know, I just want to, you know, go to work, you know, or just goof off. Sounds irresponsible. Yeah, it, it does <laughs> back then. So um got the job. I was working at the broiler. You know, you place the whoppers in the broiler. I did that. Easy job, you know. You place the bro- uh, and then you go, you put put them in the back, and then you turn, and then you go up front, and then you take them with the tongs, and then you place the burgers on the hamburgers, and then you put them in a warmer. Uh, I don't know what they do now today. Maybe the same, I imagine. So uh, besides that, I also made sandwiches. You know, we uh, now they come in boxes or, you know, but they didn't do that. First they came and, like, you wrap them. They trained me to do that. Uh, You know, as sandwich making, that wasn't bad, bad. You know, you have to remember. You had to listen what the cashier was saying. Today, they have them on the screen. You know, they have TV screens. They should have had that, but when I was there, that would have been easier. But now, now you got to listen. If you have good hearing, because it's chaotic around lunchtime. 
like that. So, because um, they all cut, they're all different. You know, some people don't want lettuce, they don't want onion, they want extra mayonnaise, you know, blah, blah, blah. They, uh, the only job I dread doing was cashier. I was nervous talking to people. I didn't like that. Dive to was okay. But cashier, I was scared as a cat. I hated that uh, part of the job. Uh, I did make sandwiches. I also made the fish sandwiches, the ham and cheese. Uh, I cleaned up. What else I did? I did the fries. And then... uh, you know, this is like a subject of Burger King, you know, I'm sorry about that. So, and then that job lasted about a year. Then I went and started and I enrolled in DeVry Institute of Technology up north full time. You know, I told my parents that uh, I don't want to work. You know, I want to concentrate on full studies because I really want to make something, make a difference for myself. You know, they said, fine. Do that. Quit your job and go full time. And I did. You know, they were very supportive like that. Uh, I didn't have a car back then, so uh, I did borrow. I did borrow my mother's car, or uh, we had two cars at the time, so I used it for work. You know, but when I went to Dubai, I didn't rely on a car. I took uh, public transportation. I took the CTA and I took the Blue Line. It was called the Congress uh, O'Hare Line. And I did that and uh, did that every day for about three years. Like that. As for Burger King, uh, I still go there once in a while. I love Whoppers, love hamburgers, you know, and the last change. My favorite sandwich uh, of all, besides the chicken sandwich, I love the Italian version. You know, like Parmesan, you know, you have uh, breaded uh, chicken with uh, marana sauce and uh, Mozzarella cheese, that is good. I love that one. They don't bring that often. It comes and goes. And, you know, I don't know if it's still on the menu. Maybe it is. No. So, like I said, you know, fast food is, I'm so weakened by that. I get a, a craving for that now and then, but I'm trying to stay away, you know, because of my health. You know, that's the way it is. Um, you got to be careful. Got to be careful. So when they introduced uh, the sandwiches, uh, that was a big deal. When I was working there at Burger King, they introduced another one, bacon double cheeseburgers. <laughs> we used to put the bacon and all that. Uh, they still do that. I, I believe they do that. But, uh, you know, that's not good for your uh, – that's it's too salty. <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay. At the beginning of the program, I mentioned I'm going to talk about the 60th anniversary of the debut of WCIU-TV Channel 26 in Chicago, and I will talk about Falstaff beer. Uh, Before I get started, I want to mention one thing. Um, I won't do a podcast Tuesday because I'm going to be a little busy uh, with something. Something came up. So I'll probably do one uh, over the weekend, next weekend, that is. And, of course, I mentioned before I have some doctor's appointments. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to ha- have a consultation with the radiologist, see what she says, hopefully. And uh, then Wednesday I have an appointment with my urologist. Uh, the funny thing is uh, my mother talked to my cousin in Greece, and she's a nurse. And she explained what was going, what's going on with me. And she says, you know, didn't they do a biopsy on this? I go, no, they didn't do that. So that's kind of odd. But she said that, that my cousin said, you know, it's probably nothing. It's just a lesion. So once, you know, radiation burns off things, I think it does. <laughs> that's what, I think that's its purpose. It probably come off and you'll be okay. I hope so. I hope so. I want to get get this over with. Then the PSA will go down, and then we'll see about the medications. We'll see about that because I'm taking two. Uh, I'm on my last one on Orgivix tomorrow. I haven't got a refill because of insurance again. It's kind of stupid. So if I see the urologist uh, Wednesday, I'll explain. I, I think he's aware of it, you know, but he he's not too happy about that. <laughs> He makes me laugh. <laughs> so uh, hopefully he can straighten it out. 
and it once it, you know once i go for sessions for radiation i don't know how many it'll be one to five two three i don't know if everything's fine the piece stays down then maybe i don't need the extandy the other medication or maybe i don't need the organics i think i'll be okay but i think the organics will stick around but maybe i don't need the extandy so that's good i uh, hope it's good news and that's one less medication okay all right now let's get started on wciu tv channel 26 in chicago now when i was growing up i remember seeing this station of my old black and white Zenith TV that we first owned in the 1970s in Rose in the Rosa neighborhood of Chicago. I remember my dad bought it. It was black and white. We didn't get color until much later. And uh, so I'll give you uh, how it started uh, when it went on the air because I missed the anniversary of that, uh, you know, of the debut of the station. So it happened February 6, 1964. That's when it first aired. Okay. And uh, the founder of this station was a man named John J. Weigel. If that last name sounds familiar to you, it does, because his son was Tim Weigel, who used to do the sports on WMQ TV Channel 5 and also on WLS uh, Channel 7 for many years. You know, very nice man. You know, unfortunately, he died of a brain tumor a long time, uh, a long time ago. He's also uh, his son, Rafer Weigel. He did the sports. Uh, I think he did the sports and he was uh, and then he uh, does broadcast news. He moved to St. Louis and then uh, he came back here and then he left again and he went to San Diego. Now I found out he's doing something different. Uh, I talked to him on Facebook. He's a very nice guy. You know, he's um, and he does follow my page and, you know, Van Chicago, Land, which is awesome. All right. So the station, uh, they put multi ethnic entertainment. You know, not much uh, like reruns or news, like new stuff. And uh, the pe- the uh, other people who had a minor interest were, there was a businessman named Howard Shapiro and his brother Gene. They, ha- they had an appliance store called CET. If you remember from the old commercials and... They showed, like on Channel 9 or Channel 32, it's like it stood for Chicago Engineers for Television. You would rent TVs. And they uh, they took over the broadcasting about two years later, 1966. Okay. Uh, the, from, 19, from all that time, they had religious programs, uh, Spanish uh, language uh, programs. One of the uh, one of the programs that stood out was the Chicago uh, Chicago. Uh, it was a stock market observer. You know, it's that show where you see all the stocks on the bo- you know, on the bottom of the screen, and you see all the the stock quotes. You know, going back and forth like that. You know, going left from right to left like that. I used to see that. I I don't know. I I don't know. I found that fascinating as a kid. Now it's a kind of dull. <laughs> I remember Jack Taylor did that for a while, and it was uh, the studio was at the top floor of the Chicago Tr- Board of Trade Building on West Jackson Boulevard. You know, and uh, one of the most controversial shows they had on the on the station was bullfighting from the Spanish International Network. Now, I don't know who decided that or, or why how this came to be. So <laughs> I don't remember seeing it, but that's according to most people that follow Van Chicago, and they, they mentioned this in the comics, they used to watch that and they find it fascinating. But you know, bullfighting is a big, a huge sport in Mexico and Spain. They, they love it. They go crazy. It's like soccer in Europe and here football, of course, here. <laughs> oh boy. You know, sports fans are passionate even back then. Also, they had another TV show, uh, which a lot of people are familiar. They had Kitty Agogo. 
It used to be on Channel 9, then they moved it to uh, Channel uh, 26, and it was hosted by Elaine Mulqueen. You know, they had the puppets, and they had a dance show. Remember her? And uh, also, the what, the most famous show that they had on was Soul Train. Yes, Soul Train. And it, it made it made its debut in 1970. Uh, the creator was Don Cornelius. If you remember, he was the host. He was an employee of the station. And uh, it was a big hit, a huge hit. They had dancing, you know. I remember watching it. It was like everyone looked like they had a good time. They're all doo, 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 like dancing like that. <laughs> and uh, then it moved. I think it moved to Channel Nine later on, you know. And uh, so, you know. And then uh, other memories of that station I had were like on Sundays. Uh, you know, they had. Uh, Ethnic programming, I remember Polish, Lithuanian, of course, Spanish. Uh, what else they had? Uh, also, Greek, of course. You know, they had the Greek program, and there was a uh, there was a Greek, there was a local Greek show called Hellenic Theater. I'm going to talk about that show someday because uh, a lot of Greeks have requested. Please talk about Hellenic Theater. You know, talk about that, and I will someday. So uh, that aired from seven o'clock, I think seven to eight. You know, maybe I think it expanded to two hours. No, not really, but an hour. That was hosted by a man. His name was Pop Bobby Papadimas, and uh, he would get on. He would smoke a big cigar. You know, introduce acts and uh, do. You know, he had sponsors. You know. <laughs> I'll talk about a little bit more about him one day, you know, because I find him fascinating. My mom started watching this show, and so do her friends, people from our church, the Greek community started watching this. The problem was we only had one television set at the time, <laughs> so I couldn't watch anything. Or my brother, you know, you know, me and my brothers, we couldn't watch anything from seven to eight, which was a downer because they had some good programming on Sunday nights. <laughs> That's until we moved to uh, to our house in 1974. We got the TV in the living room. My mom could watch that, and then I I would get my own TV. Eventually, we got a TV in the basement, so that we were free from that, you know. And then that that show lasted for a long time until I believe when Bobby Papadimus died. You know, his children took over it, but uh, it wasn't very successful, and they yanked it. They they also had Greek programming and that lasted and lasted you know for a while. Believe it or not, my mom still watches a Greek program, but it's not on the on the U. It's not on Channel Twenty Six. It's on Channel Sixty Two every Sunday. So it's sort of the same thing, like that. And then uh, then they had Spanish programming. Uh, there was one called Ayuda Ayaya, something like that. And that lasted for much of the 70s and the 80s, like that. And then, uh, in then they had then they had uh, Univision and Telemundo. Those are the Spanish networks. They had that. Then all of a sudden, in 1995, uh, WCIU turned into the U. And they started broadcasting in English. Okay. And they started they buying um, because channel there was a station called Channel Channel sixty six. This is WGBO, and that went that trend. Then those Spanish networks went to that, I believe. And they went earlier, I, I assume so. So it became the U, and I think on New Year's Day. I, 1995, I believe, uh, they started broadcasting American television. And I remember the promos. I remember the reruns of The Monsters, Leave it to Beaver, other programming. And, of course, Sven Gulli came back. <laughs> he was canceled in the late 80s. And you know what? Sven Gulli came back, hosted by Rich Cause, And uh, it was great seeing him. Oh, it was wonderful. You know, he just uh, picked up and he, he just 
pick up where he took off, and then he's still doing this today, but he's on MeTV, which I watch all the time, and he's hilarious, and he's a nice man. He's also my friend on Facebook. Okay. So, uh, then, then over the years, then the, uh, they had the, the WB, you know, Warner Brothers, a television that was on Channel 9, that was, uh, then became the CW, and, uh, but they had the kids programming there, like that, that ran for about, eh, eight or nine years. Then programming got a little, um, Different, you know. And then, um, you know, right now it's not, they don't show reruns, but not really. They show like court shows or reality shows, you know, kind of garbage t- TV. But sometimes they showed uh, sports, uh, sometimes basketball, maybe college basketball, uh, baseball, mm, once in a while, like that. Uh, like that. Um, also, let's see what else they had. Um, other programming they had the Bob Lewandowski, Lewandowski show. Oh, they also had like polka, something with, uh, yeah, Eddie Carosa's uh, polka party. A lot of people remember that. Also, they had the Marty Faye show that was way back in the 60s, you know. <laughs> also, the Outdoor Sportsman. A lot of people remember that, you know. Okay, and uh, hmm, let's see what they else they had. Also, you know, when you when it when when WCIU went first went on the air, you had to buy a converter box. You know, it, they didn't have TVs equipped with that station at first, so you had to buy a box. You know, convert just you know you've heard of that. You would connect to to your TV, and it's like you which you know it's. Uh, UHF, VHF, you know, same thing with Channel 32, Channel 44, Channel 20, you know, just like that. But later on, you didn't need it anymore. That was, that was the end of that. Okay. Uh, for the program, you know, I found on in the Chicago Tribune, the programming guide of what was on the first day they debuted on February 6, 1964. They only had two shows on. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, they had opening night that started at six o'clock in the evening uh, by John Weigel, and he just presented the uh, the station. That lasted about an hour and a half. You know, I wish somebody would have a tape of that. That'd be awesome. I want to see it. Uh, so it was an uh, open night ceremony. It was it, it was broadcasted from the Board of Trade in downtown Chicago. Right after that, it aired a basketball game. It was a basketball game. It was between New York and Philadelphia. I think it was the Knicks and the 76ers. And that was it. <laughs> but later on, they added more programming like that. And I think Two Town Baker had a show, and I forgot the name of it. I couldn't think of that. But they did re- air reruns, you know, a few in the 70s. Not many. No, it's like the late 60s. And then, you know, like I said before, they did. Uh, uh, they went to ethnic programming. Okay. All right. So right now, uh, I'm going to take a break for a moment. And next up, I'm going to talk about Fall Staff Beer. Okay. So I'll be right back, folks. Thank you. Okay, everyone, I am back. Uh, I took a quick break. Now I'm going to talk about Fall Staff Beer. Uh, you're probably asking yourself, why well, I haven't talking about this beer. It has no Chicago ties. That is wrong. No, it does. <laughs> you know, that is very memorable in this town as well. Um, I'll give you a little history of that. Uh, Falstaff was founded in St. Louis, Missouri, and it started in 1838. Uh, first, it was called Lemp Brewery. Then when you know, and then they renamed it after the Shakespearean character, Sir John Falstaff. Yeah. You learn something new every day. <laughs> and uh, it was just, uh, then it just took off, you know. And uh, so the founders of the the beer, their, their names were John Adam Lemp and also William J. Lemp. And also... Uh, 
the Grisel Deck Deek Brothers. I can't pronounce that name. <laughs> That's bad. All right. So, uh, it took a while to get popular. And uh, by in the 1960s, it became the third largest brewer in America. Let's see that. Okay. And uh, what's memorable about this beer was uh, not the beer itself. It's advertising and also associated with the Chicago White Sox um, that started in the 70s, uh, all throughout the 70s, basically. And uh, it was endorsed by none other than uh, Chicago White Sox announcer, Kerry Kerry. <laughs> oh, I remember this. This is hilarious. You know, he would say, you know, I remember watching him on television, maybe maybe on the radio, mostly on television, and he would endorse the beer many times, and he would go, Falstaff, <laughs> real loud. My, my brother did that. He would go, Falstaff. <laughs> well, he was about uh, 10 or 11 years old. And he, did that. and he always held the beer in his hand, you know. In fact, he held a lot of beer in his hand, but it wasn't just Falstaff. No, it was just other other types of uh, other types of beer brands of beer as well. I see pictures of him when he hold, held Schlitz, Meisterbrow. Eh, maybe not. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so I remember the sponsor. It was a sponsor for the Chicago White Sox. First, it was on Channel Thirty Two. Then it's Channel Forty Four. That's when the the Chicago White Sox, the rights of the airing of the games moved from 32 to Channel 44. And I remember, you know, Channel 44 was uh, kind of a small station, just like Channel 26, like I mentioned. And uh, they aired reruns of TV shows. They had local programming. They had Spanish programming. But this time they had baseball. And, of course, hockey. They did that. Uh I don't know if Falstaff sponsored the Chicago Blackhawks. Mm, I don't think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it's just baseball. <laughs> anyway, um, every, every time where Harry Kay was shown on TV and he would start singing, take me out to the ball game, and he'd be holding a glass of beer or a can of beer. And, uh, you know, you remember, most fans remember, excuse me, most fans will remember him seeing him. I'm sure he was drunk most of the time. I, I'm sure he was. <laughs> oh, what a character. I had to talk about him one day. It's funny. I, I think I did. Yeah, I think I did. Um, so, you know, but then it fell out of popularity. And uh, then you're in... Um, Around the late 70s, the, the plant, the original plant in St. Louis, closed. And then um, others did did as well. And uh, the last one that closed was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And now it, it was licensed to uh, Pabst, Pabst Blue Ribbon. So they, they got that. Of course, Pabst Blue Ribbon... Um, I don't know. They're from Milwaukee, I guess. So I guess they continue to do that. And then uh, they, believe it or not, all stuff stopped around night, about yeah, 2005. Yeah, I didn't see it much, you know. As for me drinking it, uh, I did try it. It wasn't bad. You know, it was okay. I'm not much of a beer drinker. Uh, you know, I like Greek beer. Uh, that's another story. So, <laughs> you know, but uh, a lot of most people um, remember Falstaff beer associated with Harry Carey. They uh, they did. Okay, right now I'm going to play a commercial for Falls. Uh, it's old Falstaff beer. This is like from the late 50s, 1960s. You know, I wish I could find some, some audio of Harry Carey, you know, touting this beer during a White Sox game. That'd be kind of cool, you know, to listen to that. Also be, you know, like I said, it'd be cool and it'd be hilarious, you know, and very memorable. All right. 
So here's the commercial for Frost Life Beer. And when I come back, I will wrap up the show, folks. All right. So thank you. So thank you. And, and I'll be right back. For mankind's pleasure, this is the one. Get pleasure, false man's time. The most refreshing beer a thirsty man can pour. Yet light enough to leave room for more. Man-sized pleasure. Every premium quality ball staff you form. Falstaff always takes extra care to make the finest beer possible. Even to cascading every brew over the Falstaff chilling tower, instantly icing down each brew to protect that famous premium quality taste every step of the way. Till it's safely capped in and you're ready to enjoy it. Satisfying to your man-sized thirst. Light enough to leave room for more. For man-sized pleasure, this is the one. Premium quality Falstaff. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Falstaff beer. Yeah. You know, like, uh, it's like a man's beer. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it's that's how it was. You know, they advertised beer in the old days, like almost on a daily basis, all day long, you know, you had your, the ones that we have now, you know, Budweiser, old style, um, what else, and, what, and beer that's no longer in production, Stroh's, uh, Michelob, I think Michelob's still around, yeah, that's still around, uh, Olympia Beer, <laughs> Old Milwaukee, Blatz, you know, Black Label, you know, you name it, like that, Stag. <laughs> uh, the list goes on and on and on and on, you know, Lauren Brow, of course. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's it for this program. I'll do a recap of what I talk about. I talked about the 60th anniversary of the debut of WCIU-TV Channel 26 in Chicago. And, uh, of course, False Staff Beer. And uh, this podcast will be published later on today, wherever podcasts are available, uh, you know, on any apps. Like, for example, uh, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Breaker, Overcast. Uh, If you tap on those apps on your phone, your desktop, your iPad, you know, your tablet, uh, your laptop, you know, just uh, tap, listen in. Uh, click follow to uh, get notifications of further episodes or you like to listen to previous episodes as you wish. Also be on my blog, blog to listen there. It'll take it's uh, you click on there. It'll take you a link to listen on Spotify. Also, it'll be published on my YouTube channel. Again, people ask me, where do I find your podcast? Where do I find your podcast? Go to YouTube. Do a search, Van Chicago Land Stories, or type my name. You will find it. Click subscribe. You can listen to the latest episode, or you can listen to previous episodes, and you'll get a notification uh, on your devices. Also, uh, it'll be published uh, on my social media accounts. Uh, I'll have the link. and I'll take you right there to the podcast. Uh, it'll be on Facebook, X linkedin reddit uh instagram blue sky threads and uh i forgot what else TikTok, of course okay so uh this is pico stanis your host for vanish congress stories thank you for joining me and uh today is a little chilly on this sunday yeah on this sunday uh you know, you have to excuse me. I have a little head cold. Uh, I've been kind of achy and, you know, kind of stuffed up. I just had some orange juice. You know, now I'm going to make some hot tea. Just relax for the rest of the day. I'm just uh, a little worn out. I'm still tired. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, want, I should be more energetic. You know, I want to be energetic, but uh, that's not the case. 
Okay, so here's Bye Bye for me, and here's Ray Rayner with a little traveling music saying Bye Bye Bye. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye.